Hi, this is Brooks. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple calculator using App Inventor 2. Most calculator tutorials you'll find online look something like this, where you type numbers into a text box and then click on an operation button. But that's not what a real calculator looks like. A real calculator looks something like this, and that's what we're going to build. First, we create a new project. You can call it whatever you'd like. I'll call mine Calculator. Next we need to set up the user interface. First we'll add a label. This will correspond to the display on the calculator. Before I forget, I want to go to screen 1 and set the align horizontal to center. We want the text value of this label to be empty for now. Next we'll add buttons one for each digit 0 through 9, and one button for each operator we want. For this tutorial, we'll just use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Finally, we need an equals button and a reset button. That's 16 buttons, so to keep them organized, we'll place them into a table arrangement with three columns and five rows, leaving one button aside for the reset button. Creating these buttons will be the most tedious part of the tutorial. For each one, you need to change the text property to the value you want for the button. It's also a good idea to change the name of the button into something meaningful. For example, I'll name the equals button, equals button. Now let's make the interface a little bit prettier. You can change the background color of screen 1 to something different. I'll choose dark gray. I'll change the background color of label 1 to black and the text color of label 1 to green. I'll change the width of label 1 to fill parent and the height to something larger but not too large, like maybe 60 pixels. Let's also change the label's font size to 45. Now let's try changing the font size of the buttons to something like 30. and the width of the buttons to something larger again. I think 60 pixels works okay here too. Do the same for the reset button and I think we're done. Once all of the buttons are laid out and named, we can move on to the blocks editor. Which is where we will continue in part two of this tutorial.